Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Harry Built an App, React Native Edition, September 2018 edition. Uh, two editions, I'm not sure why there's two editions. I really need an intro for this sequence, but I'm not really gonna have the time to actually make an intro video about this whole part of making an, a, an app in September, so suffice it to say, this is just me saying, hey, welcome back and hope you enjoyed the first two episodes. This is episode number three of who knows how many, because I don't know how long this is going to take me to do. This episode, I wanna focus on the actual outline, the roadmap, the product itself for this React Native application. I talked about it in the first episode, how I wanna build a picture every day app. I have it on my phone, it works B, B minus. I give it a B, B minus this app. It was probably an A, A plus when it first came out, but it hasn't really been maintained, and that's just what happens, I get it. I've done that way more times than I wanna actually remember, but I wanna make a new version of this, so I actually wanna actually take a second to actually plan out what will actually go into this application. And I'm trying to be as iterative as possible to make sure that I actually get this out before the time is up, which is arbitrary, because if it goes into October, then it's just gonna go into October. I don't really care. So today's episode is really called Product Management, Project Management, UX, UI. It's the roadmap about what we're going to actually build for this application. I'm sorry to say that I've actually cheated a little bit. I've actually planned ahead. I was trying to do all of these episodes live, on air. However, there are some things that the majority of the episode would just look like this. which isn't that entertaining. I mean, it might be if you wanna see me think and get confused and frustrated and write some things out and then delete them and then try again. But for the majority of you out there, I'm pretty sure you just wanna to get to the meat and bones of it. With that being said, let's just start talking about what we're going to make. I have a repo here, you've seen it. Last we left off, we had TypeScript support. I've actually, as mentioned, gone ahead and made an outline. So let me actually bring that up right now. Here's my outline for what we're going to actually build with this application. And I've broken it up into the way that I mentally think about an application, which is mostly by a screen. And then I've actually tried to break a few features that are a little bit more horizontal in the sense that they affect multiple screens and try to take those features out and try to do them as a separate thing later. So I don't have to actually do so many things up front and kind of do this incrementally and see progress as I go. So the first page that I actually want to talk about, and I've actually made some of these just to kind of get a feel for what's going on, is a list of all of your projects. One project can be a selfie a day, which is what I already do. Another project could be a picture of your plant growing, which is probably good if you're interested in making a cool time lapse. And also if you want to have a picture of your son every day, which is a uh, important to me as I have a new son, so I wanna see how he's changed. So here's where I'm starting to think about how the actual data of the application will be modeled. This is kind of, you can think about this as kind of like a, a project object if you wanted to. So this is a uh, project object, and we have a title, last photo, etc. So this is where I'm kind of just starting to map out what these things are gonna be here. So I wanna know, and I wanna show the last photo taken if it exists, so I can have a nice preview on the list page. Uh, the number of photos taken because it might be a nice thing to cache. Not sure if I need it for now, but it just seems like a thing that I might want to use. Um, start of first and last photo, and of course I want to actually have um, in the actual data model, which we'll get to when we get to the uh, data modeling episode, a uh, where we actually store all the photos themselves. Ah, whoops, okay, I see I got some redundancies here. I got the home screen and the list page. So let's actually merge these and have this be the uh, project list screen. And we're actually going to, um, Yank that, put this over here, and delete the project. I'm not gonna do that for now. Uh, so this is the entire project list screen. And then actually what we actually wanna have as well in this application is a um, uh, add project screen, prompt just for a title, can say, and that's all we really care about. I'm just gonna say that you need to give me a title for your project and then we'll make a new project for you. Not really that fancy, don't really care about it that much. And the next thing that I want to focus on, and this is actually giving you an overview of the next couple of episodes that will be coming at you, uh, broken up into certain pieces, um, is the uh, data management episode or data management section, how I'm actually going to store the data in this application. And to recall, this application is going to have to have data between in, uh, uh, instances of this application, so I actually have to store it in a file system somewhere. Uh, there's this thing in React Native called async storage, which is a very similar API on purpose to the local storage API in the browser. And it's a way to persist data in an application. And this is what I'm gonna actually use as the, you could call it the DAO 
for lack of a better word, that will actually be what's writing to the actual file, but I'll have there be a facade on top that actually manages all this for me. You can see that I can import async storage from React Native. I'm not gonna get into this because this will be another episode, but that's it's it's coming. Um, I'm gonna use, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about more of the data management in the data management episode, but we need to focus on that too much. Uh, the project screen is where things get a little bit exciting. Um, we're not actually going to be, uh, rendering a calendar. I'm gonna use this project called uh, React Native Calendar, which I found, and I'm very excited about this because it might be able to do 90% of the things that I wanted to, and then I can customize the rest. Uh, I have here a pre-built calendar that I can just kind of drop in there and use. I love open source. Oh my God, what is, I mean, I'm open sourcing this too, so hopefully it gives you some back to the community, but this itself is awesome. I think what I'm gonna end up using, uh, so you can have markers, so I can say if there's been a photo taken for that day or not. Um, but what I'm probably gonna use is they have actually um, this calendar list component, where you can actually see a list of all of the dates. And that's a little bit more how I mentally think about this calendar, where I'm trying to think about uh, just scrolling through your timeline of all the pictures taken and using this instead. So I wanna say that you know for a day that, that has a picture on it, for a day on the calendar that there is a picture taken, I'm gonna show the picture there. For future dates grayed out, for days that don't have a picture, show the number of that day. And then if you click on that day, we'll open the camera screen to actually capture that picture. Um, on the project screen itself, we'll also have an edit icon in the top right, which lets you just do project management. So you can delete the project, rename the project, export the project, set reminders, which we can talk about later, and alignment guides. And that's very helpful this type of app where you can actually have a bar where someone's eyes are and a bar in the middle of their face. So you can actually have a better chance of having the photos line up one day after another. I wouldn't have thought of it myself but because it's already in the application that I use and I'm being uh, heavily inspired by the application, I'm gonna use that as well. Uh, you can also reset the alignment guides, right? So there, and then also a play icon. And this is where the year's worth of work actually comes to fruition, where after you have a year of photos, you can actually turn that into a movie. We actually have a time lapse of all those photos going by. And this is where you can actually kind of like export the application, where you can stitch all the pictures into a movie. You can control how many pictures per second should be shown, whether it loops. Uh, this feature will be interesting to implement in React Native. Um, this is the one that I'm most worried about, whether I'll have to drop down and make my own native component. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It can even be a future release that we can just come out later because you don't need this until you actually have at least a week's worth of data. But that's the one I'm most worried about, but we'll see how far we can get staying just within JavaScript. Uh, we have the camera screen. We can use the camera component that's provided by Expo. You can flip to the front or back of the camera, flash on or off. Um, show or hide the alignment guides, close the camera, take the photo. Um, you can show a preview after you take the photo, and then you can allow the user to uh, either retake the photo or accept it. And then here's where I was talking about earlier about how I want to separate things out. This is really distracting. Whether I want to, I, I'm extracting certain features into their own kind of buckets so they're not going to be inflating previous work. So the alignment guide support will be its own self-contained project. It's not gonna be done alongside the camera pro the, the camera task or the uh, project task. It'll be its own separate things. It's gonna kind of be a cross-cutting concern across many screens. And you know, uh, it'll be automatically done when you take a new photo, um, an option menu to reset the alignment guide, save position the project data. So I actually have to add this into our data model to actually save the X and Y positions of those bars to actually show them again. Um, and then this is the pan responder, which I'm actually gonna have to use to actually uh, allow the user to control where those bars should go. So I'll be some fun little uh, drag and drop action. Reminders, so you can be reminded every day to take a photo. Uh, there's notifications SDK that I can use from Expo. Uh, and then also just miscellaneous stuff. I wanna lock the orientation of the application to portrait. I wanna change the entry point to be index.js, which I found a way to do that. And I just, for pure, you know, my sanity's sake, wanna do that. Uh, deep linking to a project, so when you have that notification, you tap on it, you can get taken straight into the camera so you can get the photo right away. Um, find a final name, because the React Everyday name cannot last, because that means nothing. So I'll have to at least ask for your help to figure out what I should actually name this application, or I'll have some brainstorm when I walk into a wall, get a concussion, but I'll have an amazing name from there to determine. And then alongside that final name, I'll have to make a logo, because there's no app without some branding, which allows you to market and get that shit out the door. That's kind of the high level things about what we're gonna to do today, not today, about what we're gonna to do for the entire month. 
uh, I definitely went ahead and cheated a little bit where I have some initial work done already. Uh, this is the application as it exists right now in my local repo where I have the project list screen already made. Um, you can click plus to actually add things, create a project, which is what I was talking about before. Cancel that. And when you click into a project, it's still, that will do it together. I wouldn't do that calendar screen without you. That's, that'd be too rude of me. So we'll do that together. Um, but uh, let me actually go into, but uh, that's enough for now. I think that's enough for now. It's a short episode or a short, short episode, but that's kind of where we're going to take this journey going forward. Um, I think what I actually need to do is catch you up to speed with what I've been doing while you've been uh, gone or I haven't been recording. I'm not sure which one of that is. So uh, come back next episode. Shouldn't be that soon after this episode to actually let me give you a recap on the code that I've written to get the application to where you see it today. So come back. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, do become a subscriber so you can see me speak to you as I love to do. I love talking to the camera. I imagine that this camera is all my subscribers and there's so many of you in there. I'll see you again next episode.